Hi everyone, this is the second video in my Raspberry Pi Pico tutorial series. Today we are going to be doing some very interesting stuff and the first of which is going to be a potentiometer. So basically I have this knob right here so you can turn the knob and it will do things. And we also have a servo motor and we also may have other stuff in this video. So I hope you enjoy this and if you haven't watched my first video make sure you go and do that there. It will show you how to set up the Pico and some basic things. So now we are going to go ahead and do these projects. So wiring this up is pretty easy. So first thing that you want to do is make sure your Pico is unplugged because you want to always wire it when it is unplugged. Now you want to take a wire and I'm going to use red heater because you would normally use red and right heater what you want to do is do it on the fifth pin. So we do this one so we can just plug that in and now we are going to connect this to the, the hot rail right there and this will allow us to access this pin from anywhere along this rail. Now for the ground one, we want to do the third one, which is right here. And then we want to connect it to the blue one, the negative. So now we have that all connected right here and we can put our potentiometer down here. So what I'm going to do, basically on the bottom of the potentiometer, we have these different pins right here and the middle one is the signal and the other two are the positive and negative. So we want to position it like that so that we have it like this. Flip it around and push it in like that. Now we have some pins we can connect to. And if you need help, you know, finding out where they are, just just pull it up a little there. And so what we are going to do is we need more wires here. So I'm just going to use these ones. I'm going to use the, this is the blue. So these can be for the signal. So this will be in the middle. And let's just leave that for now. And then we can put the red on this side. It doesn't really matter where it goes. So we put it there and we do the other one and we put it there. Okay, so now we have the blue wire and we can insert it in its location. So its location is going to be right here. So there's the red wire, then one space and then this. So that is our wiring for this. It's pretty simple to wire. And if I zoom out right here, we can see our circuit here. Now what we can do is plug in our Raspberry Pi Pico. Let's go over to the Python IDE. So here I am on my Raspberry Pi and we want to start a new project right here. So I have Tony opened and I have a new project right here and we are going to type some code. So first line, we want to import machine, which we did before, and then import new time, micro time. And then we want to do a potentiometer value. So I'm just going to call that pot and we want to do equals machine dot ADC. And then we want to put a pin number so you can refer to a wiring diagram for the Raspberry Pi Pico and that blue wire that we connected, you can just connect that to any of the regular pins and you can just put any pin number right here. But if you connected it how I have it, leave it like this. Then what we want to do is we want to create a loop. So while true, basically this is just going to go forever until we stop the program. Basically, let's do value equals pot dot read. You just want to make it look like this. 
and you can rename the value variable to whatever you want and we are just going to print it here so print value and you can change that to whatever you call that if you call it something else and then what we want to do utime.sleep underscore ms which is milliseconds so what we can do right here let's do 200 so every 200 milliseconds it will basically print a value to the console so now let me get my pico in here so here i am i have my pico and i have my raspberry pi and now what we can do is basically start the program and turn this knob so what we want to do first of all is to save it right here so let's just do save as Raspberry Pi Pico and we are just going to call this pot test.py. Okay, now we can run it right here. Make sure everything's connected good and run it. And now you see it's printing values. Well, let's turn it all the way to one side. So the side that I'm turning it on, it makes the value go up or you can make it go down. You just got to turn the knob and it kind of fluctuates and so if you were really you know making a system you would kind of want to you know account for some of that fluctuation but you can really see the basics right here of the potentiometer and we will be doing more with this in the future so in this video, I'm just going to show you some more things you can do with this potentiometer. But first thing we got to do is just make it work. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And it seems to be working just fine. Now I'm going to be back with some more projects. All right, so now it is time to hook up a servo motor. So as you can see, I have this servo right here. It's a 9 gram micro servo and it's just the regular kind that you would use with a Pico or any microcontroller like an Arduino. But we have this right here, this connector, and so we can't plug this into the board. That's the problem. Well, what I'm going to do is actually use these pins to connect this and then we should be able to hook it up to the board and to the Pico. So as you can see, we have the different colors. So first of all, the brown one, that is the negative. So let's connect that to a blue wire. You can use whatever colors of wires, of course. And then the red one is a positive. And then of course, there's just one more. So that would be the signal. And now we have that all right like that. So now we come over here and we hooked up this earlier. So what we want to do is put in the negative to the blue, the positive to the red, and the white we are going to connect to the Pico. So I'm going to use the pin right here at the bottom, just like that. So now we should have two things. We should have the servo and we should have the potentiometer all connected like this. Now you can plug in your Pico and I'm going to go over to my Raspberry Pi. So here I am on my Raspberry Pi and so I'm in Tony right now. So what you want to do is do control in and you want to open up a new document, you can save that to the Raspberry Pi Pico and we're going to call this servo.py. There we go. And I'm going to leave this down in the description. This is some code that you can just copy and paste because you won't need to write these out every time. So this is just basically the servo functions. And you know, you can you can study this for yourself, but I'm just going to leave it down in the description and you can change this pin number. This pin number, if your pin is different that you connect your servo to, but what you want to do is go down here and then when you press enter, you'll see an indent. You want to 
you know, make it normal like that because Python, you know, uses indents for, you know, the loops and stuff like that. So you don't want it in the loop. And what we're going to do is while true, just like we did last time, we're going to create a loop that runs forever. And we're going to do for angle in range. Basically just make it like that and you can escape out of that loop there. So this will be for testing purposes. However, in a future tutorial, I'm going to cover more of the Python code. So, you know, you can kind of get a better understanding of all the functions and stuff like that. But this is a test for now. And so basically we want to do servo dot right servo comma angle right here. And that will basically, you know, write that value to the servo. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But for now, what I want to do is just show you what this does when we run it. So here I am, I have my servo right here and we are just going to run this program. So let's click the run button. And there is an issue. This is actually for an example that I got this code. So let's just simplify only code right here actually. And let's just do a servo. Wait a minute. We had servo dot right. That's supposed to be servo underscore right. So if we fix that, that should work now. So now I've got my servo right here and let's try to run this program again. And it's working. So that is our example. It makes the servo go like this. There are lots of things that you can do with the servo. But basically it's just going to move to a certain angle. So let's try to put some angles in here. So I'm going to stop this. That will restart the Pico basically. And so now we can do some things. I can kind of talk to you a little more about this code. So what we can do is servo underscore right. So this is actually the function that we defined right here. So I just wasn't paying attention before because I was going off the example. So servo underscore right and then the servo's name is servo because that's what we have up here. We have this and then we want to do comma and now we want to put in the angle. So we could just put whatever angle we want and then if we run this we should get some results. And just so you know, the servo might twitch a little bit even when you're not using it. That's just what it does when the Pico is powered on. But why don't we click the run button? It adjusts the servo to whatever position we put in. So if we were to put in a different angle right here. So let's just do 100 now. It will move a little bit. So you can just play around with this, put in some values and run it. It will make the servo go like that. And so now we can, you know, start to work on the code of this. So in a future tutorial, I'm going to focus more on the Python language. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But for now, you know, I'm really just doing like the the interfacing with the hardware you know we got the servo up and running and then later once we have our circuits built and everything like that we can we can kind of do our code right here so why don't we make something out of this we could interface it with the potentiometer but for now let's do something else let's do zero right here and basically we're going to do u time dot sleep and then we're going to put in a time, so like 200. But the thing is that we can actually do is here, we can actually do from u time import sleep. So now we can just say sleep. We don't have to do u time dot sleep. 
So let's just take that out since we added this code up here. Now let's go down a line and let's do servo underscore right again and then we can do this and we can do our next angle. So I'm just going to go 10 at a time up to 100 and then I'm going to go back. So let's just do this. And this is not the most efficient way of doing it because you could make the loop like before, but we haven't really gotten into this. This is a simple method, it just takes some time. So what I'm going to do actually is copy this right here and paste it, go down the line, paste it again, paste it again, and then we can just make these values go up like this. So if you were writing code for something, you wouldn't really do this because there are more efficient ways of doing it. But just for the demonstration purpose, I'm going to do it like this. And one more to go. And there we go, just like that. So I guess we have to add one more if we want it to go back to zero. And now we have the while true right here. And we can run this and see what happens. I guess it's not looping. That's weird. Maybe we should try uTime.sleep again. And now let's try running this. We're still not getting a response. So I'm not sure why it's doing that. Oh, I know why. We forgot to do sleep underscore ms. So it's wanting to sleep in seconds instead of milliseconds. So there's obviously lots of debugging that you have to do in your code. And you have to figure out why things aren't working. So that's why I'm not just cutting this out because I want, you know, I want you to be able to do this stuff. And this is just part of writing code. So now if we run it, it's working. And we could just adjust those values to whatever millisecond values we want. But this is a nice little program for a test. And I'm just going to stop that, it's a little loud. But anyway, we have that right there. And so in the future, you know, you could do lots of stuff with the servo in the potentiometer. And we will be doing more projects in a minute. But this is a very nice technique to know. So let's come back later. So after editing what I had, I decided that this should probably be all for today because it's getting quite long. But I hope this video has helped you out with your Raspberry Pi Pico knowledge. And until next time, it's Fortnite Kiwi from Super User Project Dial. If you're new, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also leave a like. Until next time, we will see you next time.